So I just recorded this entire episode, and I was recording the wrong display. So I now have a 30-minute video of me talking with just a notepad up. <laughs> so that's useless, so I'm going to record it again. Hey guys, welcome back again. In this episode, we're going to do the player leveling. We're going to have experience and the current experience and the required experience and all that stuff. And also we're going to have experience assigned to our enemies and then we can grant the experience when they die to the player and calculator level and blah, blah, blah. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to go to my slime and on my slime, I want to set up the experience value that is going to be granted to the player when it dies. But first of all, I want to make sure it's in my interface. So we're going to require this on all enemies and I'm going to require a property. It's an integer that's called experience. And also I want to require, it can't be public on the interface. And also I want to require another method. It's called die, right? We already have this implemented, but uh, I want to make sure everything requires it. Pretty simple. And also UI event handler from the last video has a method for the player leveled. I changed the name to changed and you can see the change up here as well. Same thing, just different name. I want to now create a combat events script. It's going to be handling all the events that happen during combat. So we have the one for a UI. This is going to be the same thing in a sense, except it's going to be handling specifically combat events. It's going to be a static handler, just like our UI. For now, all I can think about that we're going to be needing is a death event so when an enemy dies or when anything dies I guess but we can use it for also our looting system for when an enemy spawns attacks if we have to know when something happened during our attacks or whatever we can use it for anything like that so it's gonna be a public delegate void I'm returning anything same as our events for the UI and it's gonna be enemy event handler and this is going to require a parameter of I enemy type. I'm just going to call it I enemy type. I'm just going to call it enemy because we're going to use this for anything that handles the enemy events. And likely all they'll need is the actual enemy object. And we can get it from the interface I enemy. Pretty cool. And then the event will be a public static, as our other ones were event, enemy event handler. And I'm just going to call it on enemy death. And then set up the handler itself, public static void, call it enemy died or something like that. And this is going to require the same parameter of I enemy, enemy. And then just call the event on enemy death, passing it our enemy. We've done this probably 20 times by now, but I also want to check to make sure it's not null as we had this issue before where we didn't have a listener and we kept having an issue with it. So I want to just make sure that on enemy death is not equal to null. And we could use a, an empty delegate for this to make sure, but we'll just do it this way as it's quick. And now I want to write the player level script. It's going to handle all of this stuff. So I'm going to create a new C sharp script called player level due to a lack of a better term and then I want to in player level we don't require an update for this we have a couple of properties the first one being the actual level the next one being the required or the current experience and then we'll need the required experience for the next level so if we're level one and our current experience is 50 and our required experience is 100. Well, we need 50 experience to get to level 2. And then level 2 to level 3, the experience will be a bit different, right? So it might require more experience. So the way I'm going to handle this is using my getter here. All I've used so far is auto implementing properties, but I want to use our getter for the required experience to handle the simple calculation of getting the actual value. So we're just going to add it to the body of the getter. And it's going to just return the level times something like 25. And this formula can be anything you want it to be. It can be as advanced as you want it to be to create the, the ramp that you want for your levels. 
but I don't necessarily have anything in mind, have anything planned for that. So level times 25 is fine. Level one requires 25, level two requires 50 and so on. So every time I call required experience, the returned value will be level times 25. Pretty cool. So I want to start out with level equaling one uh, so that we require 25 experience. And also we could load this in from a file very easily when we have a save file to do that from. Next thing I want to do is we're going to be working with the enemy object that when the enemy died, it passed it through the event system and then we get it. But for our experience, we're going to require an experience value. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set up a handler for the enemy object to take that and convert it to experience in some way. So I probably have for the experience a public void grant experience. And this is because I want to be able to grant experience no matter what, even if I'm just completing a quest or drinking a potion. I don't want it to be relied upon the combat system to grant experience. So I want to have this separated and it's just going to take an int that is a mount. And then we'll do all the, the math in here for the levels. But then I want to be able to take the enemy and pull the experience value from it and grant that amount of experience. So it's going to be a public void. I'm going to call it enemy to experience again because I'm not very creative with names. And I want to take the I enemy object from our event that we created earlier. And so all this would do is take grant experience and pass it the enemy object experience value just like that so it's taking our combat events which is an enemy object so when the event fires whatever is listening to it is getting the enemy that died getting that object then I can go through that and pull out the amount of experience that that enemy had and then grant that to our player right here so to do this I'll do first of all current experience is add to that we're going to add to it the amount okay but what if when I did that, I got enough experience to grant a level. What if I got enough experience to grant two levels? Maybe three. Maybe it was a lot of experience and I'm a low level. So I want to make sure I handle all the cases for this. If there's potentially three levels to be had from killing that one thing or from completing that one quest, I want to make sure that I take into account all of those potentials. So what I can do is since we're going to have a remainder, so if we take the current experience and subtract from it the required experience, the remaining experience is how much that did not get used to get that level, right? So if I have 100 experience, I require 50. 100 minus 50 leaves me with 50 current experience. Is 50 enough to get the next level? Well, I don't know. We have to check again and see because the amount that is required went up when we got the level. So to do this, we're going to do the simple while loop, and I'll explain it as we go here. A while is just going to do something for the extent of something being true, right? So if while true, well, this will run forever. So what I want to do is do a while current experience is greater than or equal to required experience. So while the current experience that we have is more than the amount that we require, this loop will be true and it will run. So we have to modify the current experience while we're in here. But the first thing I want to do is add my level. Actually, the last thing I want to do is add my level because level changes required experience. So we want to make sure that level is added, but at the end of the loop. What I want to do right here is subtract the required experience from the current experience. So the way this works, if I take the current experience and remove the required experience from it, like I said, if I have 100 experience, I require 50 experience. Well, my current experience is then going to be set to 50. And it's going to go back through again and run it again. And it's going to see that, okay, well, this time I require 75 because I got a level or whatever. And I only have 50 experience. So that's not enough to complete a level. So don't. Just move on. I just have 50 out of 75 experience. And that'll be shown on the progress bar. But if I had maybe 100 experience left over and I required 75 for this level, well, it's going to do it again. And it's going to keep doing this until I've used all of my experience and gained all of my levels that I possibly can gain with the remainder experience being stored in current experience because it's a simple, simple math problem. If I require 200 experience and I have 300, if I take 300 and remove 200 from it, I have 100 left over and that 100 will go towards my next level. Pretty cool, pretty simple. And then all this needs to do is update the UI. So like I said, we have that already in there. So I'm going to UI event handler dot on, what was it called? Player level change, player level changed. 
just like that. No, it doesn't require any parameters, anything like that. Very simple. And then in start, we want to make sure that we're listening for an enemy to die so that when it does happen, we can pass the enemy to our enemy tube experience. It can grant the experience and then it can go through and update the UI. All that stuff working in order makes for a game. So if I can do this now with a combat events dot on enemy death and add to it a subscriber of enemy to experience, just as we've done before, just like that grant experience and then UI event handler player level changed. Pretty cool. So what I want to do now is in player, get rid of that. I want to have a reference to the player level component on the player from player. Simply I'll have a property that's called player level and it will be, or it is player level and it will be called player level. And this mixture of, of properties and just the plain fields, the standard variable, if you will, is um, is the result of the serializing in Unity and the inspector work that we're doing. So in my own projects, I would have a way to serialize the properties so that I could work with them in the inspector. And we could do that pretty easily, but it would just, it's just not necessary for this. So instead, if I don't need it to be in the inspector and I wanna work with it in code and I prefer to have the auto implementing property so that I can do stuff with it like I did with the required experience in the future if I want to, changing it isn't hard to do if it's already a property. Pretty cool, so that's why I have the interchanging properties and fields. Then I'm just gonna set player level to be equal to, or not, yeah, to be equal to get component player level because it's gonna be a component on our actual player object. The player level is gonna be attached to that. Did we already do that? Let's see. If I go to my player, it's not over here, so I'm gonna take my player level and drag it over here. There are compiler errors. Oh, we don't actually have, well, we implemented it, but we didn't actually, why is it not telling me it's incorrect then? Hmm. Sorry, I've done two of these now, so I, I got a little off there. So there we go, it's telling me, hey, please implement this interface. <laughs> So we have the enemy um, contract signed, but we're not following along with it. So what I want to do is make sure we implement this experience property as we agreed it to do. So add a property for experience on our slime and then set the experience to be something. In the case of the slime, it'll be 20, just a random number. And then also on die, we want to set the combat event to work, but I'll get to that here in a second. Make sure that was the only error that I have. Okay, now I want to attach my player level to my player. And I'm going to move it up one. Save that. And now I want to go back into my slime. And I'm going to, on my slime, go through combat events. When it dies, I want to say enemy death or enemy died, right? Because it died. But I need to pass it an I enemy for this enemy. It's a, the enemy interface for this enemy. And since this is, in a sense, an eye enemy, all I have to do is pass it a reference to this actual object, the one calling the event. So just this, this instance of the object. And so the event system will now have a reference to the enemy that died, which means player level will have a reference to the enemy that died. And also when this all happens, the UI will be updated because of how everything's set up. So now all I have to do is make sure that I update the UI and it's going to be very similar to my update health method. So I take this copy and paste it. I don't need the parameters and it can be called update level. And it's going to be working with this dot level dot text, which is just the text component called level. And it's going to be set to, so we have a reference to the player in here already. If we have a reference right here, all I have to do is go through player dot player level and then get the level in player level. And that's gonna be converted to a string just like that. So that's going through player dot player level and player level has a level current experience and required experience for our player. So I'm gonna handle all that in there. So what I can do now is actually I updated the wrong one. Oops, <laughs> take this, put it down here, take this, replace that. 
because I messed it up. There we go. Now all I have to do is take our fill amount on the, ah, I still did that. There we go, <laughs> back to normal. I have to take the fill amount for the level fill, dot fill amount, and set it to be the current experience divided by the, the required experience as opposed to current health divided by max health. So to do that, it'll be player dot player level dot current experience. And you're gonna divide it by player dot player level dot required experience. And remember, required experience updates itself using the getter. It'll change how much is required based on the player level. Pretty cool. So all this should work how we expect. All we have to do now is call update level whenever we get a level. And the way we do that is we subscribe our UI event handler dot on enemy or on player level change. When that happens, we want to call the update level method. So whenever this event fires, call update, oops, call update level, which is going to update the level text and also the fill amount, just like our player. All the same thing, just working with different data. So in the end, this should have our player level hooked up so we kill a slime we get experience calculate a level and if we get a level we'll update the UI even if we just get experience we're gonna update the UI because what we're doing right here is whenever we get experience we're going to update the UI because we have the radial progress bar that we want to change based on our experience so if we test this really quickly so I hit boom it died and I got my experience and I am confident this will work a bit beyond that so if I make another one here quickly for testing or if I made one that granted me 5,000 experience I'm confident that it would work to calculate all the experience required so I'm level 2 with a bit of experience left over uh, enough to not to get me a level so it's still there and I kill a few more and I'll get more levels and so on so quickly to test this I want to make sure what I'm saying works so if I were to go into player level or slime level here or slime level just my slime and change the experience to 150 experience and I play, I should get a few levels. Level five now with no experience it shows. Then I level six and you can see how the progression changes that because the first one I killed got me five levels even. The next one I killed only got me one and then almost another level. So that's how my level progression works. Yours is probably different, hopefully different. But that's gonna be it for this episode guys. If you like what you saw, Patreon.com slash GameGrind to support the channel. Apologies for the delay on this video. I've had some stuff to do. Um, my mother was in the hospital for some things, and it's been kind of hectic around here the past couple of weeks. A lot of you know about this already. A lot of you don't. So if you don't, there's some stuff on the forum about it, and I'll be making videos soon to talk more about it because things have, have uh, come around, and it's looking better and better, so that's good. Um have any questions to go to the form form.gogamegrind.com get answers a lot quicker there with the community helping me with that it's great over there so please check it out i have a new asset on the asset store if you go to the game grind publisher page you can find it but i'll be doing a pay uh, a, a video on it soon talking about getting started with it and how to use it it's an, a simple achievement system for your games in unity very simple to use and i'll be getting over that soon in a video and a unity tips to come talking about coroutines as well as more simple rpg talking about looting you know looting's gonna be fun so please stick around guys thank you guys for watching my name is austin and i will see you next time